What's up YouTube? I'm Valentin the Mad and this is a good review of the Evil Within. The Evil Within is a survival horror game by Tango Gameworks. Now most games in that genre usually don't have amazing dynamic gore systems, with all of the mess happening in the cutscenes. The Evil Within seemed at least somewhat different. I have seen really gory looking headshots, the blood splatter on the environment was interesting, and the animations looked good too. Now it's time to take a deeper look at the game, and find out how gory the Evil Within really is. I'll be reviewing every aspect of the game's gore effects, and the score will be set based on 4 categories. Body damage, environment, animations and sounds, the fuel. Heads can be damaged and destroyed, and you have this stuff for explosives. Now one of the coolest features in the gore system is this head splitting effect that you get on non-fatal headshots. You have several variations of it, and the looks are absolutely awesome. The biggest issue about it is that it's not dynamic and can happen only once for most characters. So if the second shot at the head doesn't kill the character, all he will get is this pretty bad looking vehicle. Now as for other dismemberment, all that you have is this total disassembly if the character was killed by explosives. It happens exactly the same way every single time, and it looks like some kind of an assembly kit for a psychopath rather than the result of an explosion. And if that isn't bad enough, the mess vanishes almost instantly. I'm usually not calling for more dismemberment variations in the gore reviews, but it would make sense to expect at least some basic limb amputations in such a game. Now as for non-dismemberment body damage, you have wound decals for gunfire, and the same decal for crossbow shots too. The looks of body wound decals are not very good, they're small, their color is very bright and they actually vanish very quickly. I hate seeing bloodstains disappear in video games, but having wounds disappear on the body is much, much worse. And as I mentioned previously, the same small decal is used for crossbow bolts too, which simply looks awful. The player deaths aren't bad at all. The kills by the bigger characters are pretty awesome, and even some deaths by the smaller enemies look nice too. Only some of them though. As for the burning, it's bad. Really bad. You have a short animation along with some screams, and as soon as the enemy dies, this happens. Now as for the boss fights, you will be fighting big and responsive damage sponges until their health bar drops and they will die. Pretty much all of the body damage you will see are the bullet decals. Now the thing is, every enemy in the game is a bit of a bullet sponge. The generic zombies take way too many bullets before they are actually dead, but there is one major difference. The generic zombies feel very responsive in the animations department, and therefore when you are fighting one of them, you don't feel like you are shooting a BB gun at an Abrams tank. The boss fights are a different story though. Yes, they do have some damage response animations, but the difference is that you need to shoot the boss character 5 or 6 times at the head before you actually see those animations. So yeah, I did not enjoy those sequences very much. You have blood splatter for the various attacks, and there's quite a lot of blood spilled on each hit. The blood stains are actually very cool. The splatter stains characters along with the environment. You can blow someone's head off, and if a character is standing behind them, they will be stained too. That is true for every single character in the game, including the player. It's a very cool feature, and I actually haven't seen it done this well anywhere else. You could get your character stained in the enemy's blood in Mortal Kombat 10, but in that game it's just a few drops and it's hardly noticeable. In the Evil Within, there's no way you will miss it. But as usual, there are issues with those mechanics. The first one is the additional spinning effects that go into nowhere and don't stay in the environment. And to be honest, I have no idea why the game has those in the first place. The immediate splatter after you shoot someone is not too bad, and then you see this, and it only makes matters look worse. The next issue is the color of the blood that is actually inconsistent. 
most environments I played in had the color way too bright. It looked right only in several very specific locations. But those issues are fairly minor. The biggest problem about those effects is that everything disappears to them quickly. The blood disappears in about 5 seconds and the bodies disappear after some time too. And really, if this game had a good aftermath feeling, the other issues wouldn't count that much. Take Chivalry Medieval Warfare for example. The looks of the bloodstains aren't the greatest and the blood spilling mechanics are very flawed, but you still get an awesome feeling when you see a field full of blood and bodies. Just imagine all of the mess actually staying in the evil within. The splatter we have now, along with a possible blood pool under dead characters, could deliver an amazing aftermath experience despite the flaws. You have response animations for your attacks with the ability to drop enemies. On death, you have an animation that is followed by ragdoll physics at the end of it. The response animations are good in this game and you can really feel the heaviness of each hit. Dropping an enemy will disable them for a few seconds, making it easier for you to finish them off. The biggest issue is that the animations are done the old school way, where you have a set animation with no physics involved. It basically means that you will see rough animation transitions and the animations don't interact very well with physical barriers. The other issue is that enemies have only two states of behavior, alive and kicking or dead. Now in the Evil Within most enemies are slow by default, so adding an even slower walking animation wouldn't make much sense. What could be done is having zombies crawl at you and try to grab your leg after they received a certain amount of damage. You have response sounds on impact and enemies react on pain and on death. I really like the sounds for the head damage effect. It's a good combination of a crack sound along with blood spilling and it feels very satisfying. Zombie sounds aren't bad at all. They react to taking damage and make noises pretty much the whole time. Their sounds are not exceptionally brutal, but they do the job and they never had quiet moments during combat. Well, the feel is not very good. The animation and sound departments are the only solid things about the core system in this game. Every other aspect has a lot of issues, even though some could easily be avoided or improved. No bullet sponge boss characters would be a good start. Better looking wounds for shots anywhere other than the head would be great. Not having those wounds disappear would be even better. So the score for body damage is 8 out of 30. The score for environment is 10 out of 30. The score for animations and sounds is 17 out of 30. I give the feel a score of 4 out of 10. So this gives the Evil Within score system a total score of 39 out of 100. So yes, like most games in that genre, a dynamic core system was not the top priority in the Evil Within, and if you just want to kill stuff, I would not recommend getting this game for that purpose. But still, the Evil Within does have some very cool and uncommon features that deserve the attention. I would definitely want to see more games do blood splatter that can literally stain everything and everyone in its way. The head splitting is absolutely beautiful, and longer response animations should also be much more common. Hope you enjoyed watching the review, let me know how you feel in the comment section, and if you like the video, subscribe and share it with your friends. You can find the link to all of my gore reviews in the video description. Until next time!